Hey everybody, it's Pastor Jason and Lisa here, and we're so glad that you joined us this morning for Harvest Online. We are so glad that you tuned in. Yeah. It's kind of weird uh, some weeks because I'll run into people from church and uh, they'll say something like, I'll see you on Sunday. And I'm like, yeah, you'll see me, but I don't know. I don't ever get to see you. Yeah. It's been so one directional these last few months, which Which is why we are uh, so so excited. excited. So excited. That I cut you off. We're starting in person services on August 30th. Yes. We cannot wait to be with you. It'll be awesome. And so many people have already signed up to serve on Dream Team. Yeah. Uh, Let us know that you're ready to come back and. Uh, man, I'm I'm just really, really encouraged by that. So thank you for all of you who've already signed up and shame on you to all of oh, you. Goodness. I'm teasing. I'm totally teasing. <laughs> totally teasing. We love all of you. Um, so we did want to remind you about Wednesday morning devos. Mm-hmm. We started that two weeks ago and uh, we're doing devos, uh, Facebook live devos Wednesday mornings. And we apologize. We changed the time on you this week with very little notice. But we decided to go a little bit earlier, maybe make it easier for people um, as they're getting ready for the day. So yep. we're doing it at 8 a.m. From here on out, 8 a.m. Uh, well, we'll at stay. least this week. I don't know. Oh, goodness. I like to change things, right? All right, okay. this week and probably every other one is going to be at 8 a.m., but I'm not making any promises. 8 a.m. Wow. Devos. All right, um, what's happening today? What is happening today? I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm preaching a great message on the promise of God. I thought there was something else I was supposed to announce. I'm like, I didn't get the memo. Y'all, here's a little secret. Lisa likes to script these things. I don't like to script them. So every once in a while, it's fun for me to throw a curveball like that in there. So thanks for tuning in today. We're talking about the promise of God, that God is our refuge. Ready to worship? Let's worship. <laughs> so awkward. <laughs> Ready to worship? And then all of a sudden you look at me. Good morning, Harvest. We're happy that you're able to uh, join us this morning as we worship. And before we do that, I just want to encourage you. This song says, when you walk into the room, everything changes. So I just want you to remember that, that no matter where you are this morning, that Jesus can walk into that room and change and rearrange everything in your life. So just remember that and join us as we worship this morning.
everyone, welcome to Harvest Online. We are so glad that you've joined us this morning. I'm sure you've heard that by now we're, we're resuming in-person services coming August 30th, and we cannot wait to see you. When we come back, we want you to enjoy yourself and stay safe. And to accomplish this, we need all hands on deck. Many of you have already signed up to serve, which we are super grateful for. But if you haven't done this yet, and you are ready to come back and serve, We'd like you to come to harvestabq.org slash dream team and sign up there. We're also starting Financial Peace University classes on Tuesday, August 18th. FPU is a Dave Ramsey class designed to help you with your money. This class will be completely online and led by Jacob and Shauna Pointer. You can sign up at harvestabq.org slash FPU. I am continually blown away by the generosity of Harvest, uh, even during a pandemic as we're in right now. Pastor Jason was sharing with me the other day that in spite of everything that is going on, you guys have continued to partner each and every single month with one of our favorite missions, Partners Feed One. Uh, every month we're feeding 80 kids in Haiti through this ministry. Harvest, thank you so much for your faithfulness and generosity, both here in Albuquerque and all around the world. We know that in this time, there's so much uncertainty going on with our finances and our families and all the things that are happening uh, in, in this current time. But we wanna pray over you today and remind you that there, there is someone who is faithful and that's God. God will always be faithful. So let me pray for you. God, I praise you and I thank you for every individual that's tuning in this morning. God, I, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your faithfulness in the good times and the bad. I thank you, God, that you're faithful, that you're always faithful, that you're always faithful to, to each and every one of us, to our families, to the things that we're going through. God, I, I thank you and I praise you for your faithfulness. And I thank you, God, for the generosity of Harvest. God, that we continue to be so generous to the community around us and even to those around the world. God, we praise you and we thank you in your mighty name. Amen. Now let's join Pastor Jason. Welcome to Harvest Online. You picked a wonderful day to connect with us. We we're so glad that you did. We're talking about the promises of God. We have a theme verse for this series. It's found in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. And here's what it says. So let's do it. Full of belief, confident that we're presentable inside and out. Let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. He always keeps his word. Uh, the girls and I love to snow ski. By the girls and I, I mean my daughters, not my wife. Lisa's deathly afraid uh, of skiing, so she doesn't go with us. But the, the girls and I love to snow ski, and uh, we will we'll go, and we just have so much fun. But one of the things that happens is when we get on the lift to ride up to the top, I'm constantly reminding the girls, girls, hold on to your stuff. What happens if you're not a skier is on the way up, you kind of make the adjustments, right? You, you take your gloves off, you, you get a snack out of the pocket, or you find your chapstick, or you, you take a layer off. Or, so I'm always scared they're going to drop something. So I'm always telling them, don't drop it. Hold tight to your stuff. And I'm sure they get tired of hearing me say it, but I've, I've learned because we've had some, we've lost some things along the way. A couple years ago, Eden took her helmet off. And as soon as she did, I watched her goggles fall all the way down. As soon as we got off the, the lift, we skied down as fast as we could. We couldn't find them. We searched all day, all over the mountain. We went to Lost and found, we never found your goggles, did we? And I remember saying that day, hold tight to your stuff. I'm here to remind you today not to hold on to your goggles or your gloves or your chapstick, but to hold tight to the promises of God. 
Today, our promise is in Psalm chapter 46, which if you happen to tune in on Wednesday to our weekly Devo that we started doing, that was the Devo, uh, that was the scripture that my dad shared. I've been inviting some guests and, and we're, we don't, I'm not telling them what promise to talk about. I just say, hey, what's one of your favorite promises? And it was so fun because Wednesday he said, this is the promise I'm going to talk about. I said, no way. That's the one we're talking about this Sunday. And I just love how God orchestrates things sometimes to just emphasize something he's trying to teach us. Psalm chapter 46 says this, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Scholars are not entirely sure of the context of this psalm, but most agree that it was written in a time of severe trouble. The overarching idea is this. The help of God is stronger than any crisis you will face. Some, some of us need to hear that again today. The help of God is stronger than any crisis you will face. But we'll just make it a contextual for us today. The help of God is stronger than the coronavirus. Amen for that, right? The help of God is stronger than a failing stock market or a failing economy. The help of God is stronger than discouragement, depression, fear, anxiety. The, 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 you can trust God in a storm. The help of God is stronger. Sometimes in nature, there will be a particularly violent storm that arises from a rare combination of factors. And when this happens, it's called the perfect storm. Sometimes this happens in life as well. Uh, there's particularly bad uh, uh, affairs that happen arising from a number of negative and un unpredictable factors. I don't know if you saw the movie, The Perfect Storm. I'm not going to say it's a great movie, but it's kind of a fun movie to watch. They did a great job uh, with the storm. It, it, it's intense. I, I rewatched a clip this week because it's, it, it's an intense moment. And, and in the storm, there, there's a moment where it seems like maybe they're going to make it. It seems like the storm is over. The waves have been crashing. The rain is beating down. The wind is blowing. The lightning's flashing. And all of a sudden, it seems to get calm. And you see all of the, the actors on the boat. They kind of look out the window. And, and, and there's some hope in their eyes. Like, maybe we're going to make it. And the character played by Mark Wahlberg, he says, simply he says, I think we're going to make it. And they just kind of sit there for a minute, and then all of a sudden, the sky turns black again, the wind picks up, the waves come back, and it's very temporary. They realize that the storm wasn't over. They found themselves in the eye of the storm. They were in the very middle, they had a moment of calm, and now they realize it's so much worse. They're not going to get out of it. And George Clooney, uh, he, says that he just says this, he says simply, she's not going to let us out. I don't know where you find yourself in the storm right now. Maybe you're like Wahlberg and you're like, I think we're going to make it. I think we're gonna, if, as soon as school starts, I think we're going to make it. As soon as I get back to my job, I think we're going to make it. As soon as I don't have to wear this mask, I think we're going to make it. Maybe you're a little bit more like Clooney and you're saying, we're never going to get out of this. <laughs> this storm, I mean, I, we're just, I don't know if it's ever going to end. I don't know where you find yourself in this storm, but I have such good news for us today. Life's storms can't hold a match to the faithfulness, the strength, and the help of our God. That's the focus of our promise in Psalm 46 today. Let's dig in just a little bit. It says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help 
in trouble. God is our refuge. The, the dictionary defines refuge as a condition of being safe or sheltered from pursuit, danger, or trouble. It's interesting because if you look uh, at nature, all creatures, when they're in distress, they run for refuge. It's how they're created. Um, rabbits, for example, they run to their hole. I, I remember as a kid, uh, I used to hunt out in the desert of New Mexico for the jackrabbit. And, and just when I thought I was going to sneak around the bush and, and, and ambush the rabbit, he just seemed to disappear. Where did he disappear to? Well, he, he jumped into his hole. And, and, and the rabbit holes, they're complex systems of tunnels, sometimes as big as a, as a, as a tennis court. And I mean, they're, they're massive. This is their refuge. Beavers run to their, uh, their dams. They're called lodges. They're thick shelters of mud and sticks, and it protects them from the predators. And they're, they're so smart, they actually build underwater uh, uh, escape routes, right? So, so if the animal's coming this way, they escape that way. They, they, they run to their refuge. Clownfish find refuge in anemones. That's a hard word to say. And these anemones, they, they have a sting that's, that's harmful or, 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 or hurtful to the other fish, and so they, they find refuge there. Sociable weavers are birds that live in groups, and when they're in danger, they retreat. The whole group, they retreat to this giant nest within a nest. And, and everyone knows where a turtle goes in times of trouble. Some people do that as well. Just crawl into their shell. Animals find safety they hide in the, the, the refuge, the shadow. There, there's, there's a covering there. When they're threatened, they run to the refuge. When you and I are threatened or in distress, Psalm 46 reminds us that we can run to God for our refuge. When we feel fear and anxiety and shame, we can run. We can, and here, when, in his refuge, we find security. In his refuge, we find peace. These last few months, we've heard this term, shelter in place. The idea of, of shelter in place is stay in one place uh, so that the thing that's dangerous can't get to you, right? Like, hold up, find refuge, find, find refuge here so that the virus or whatever it is can't get to you. And, and that's not really what David's saying here, though. I, I love actually what David's saying. David's saying we, we don't have to find refuge. We don't have to hide from the stuff that we're scared of. We find refuge in God. Hey, here's an important lesson for us to understand today. Distance from our enemies is not what creates safety. That, that's the idea of shelter in place, is we create distance from the thing that we're scared of. We create distance from whatever we think might harm us. But what Psalm 46 is telling us is the safest place to be is in the presence of God. We find refuge in the presence of God. He shelters us. He's our shield. He's our defense. He's our protection. He, he's, a, he's a mighty wall. He's a strong fortress. We are safe in Him. There was a, a, a fantastic news story in the Los Angeles Times back in March, right when everything was really starting to unfold as COVID was really starting to hit the U.S. There was a, a news article. Here's the title, Bunker with a Bowling Alley, How the Rich Are Running from Coronavirus. I, I saw that and I'm like, well, I have to read about this. I mean, if I'm going to have a bunker, I should put a bowling alley in, right? And, and it said this, it said, inquiries and sales are skyrocketing for bunkers and shelters across the country. So this was March. This is when everyone was freaking out, right? Everyone was trying to figure out what in the world is this thing that's coming, you know, this, this danger. How are we going to handle this? And, and there were many who were looking for refuge, <laughs> The article talks about how this company, they worked hard to make bunkers feel more like home. One of the guys said, movie theaters are common. We built one in California that has a shooting range, a swimming pool, and a bowling alley. It's starting to sound kind of fun. Like that's, I might kind of want to go there, right? This company, they have 24 options for bunkers, okay, in case you're in the market today. I don't know. The smallest is an 8 by 12. It has a bunk bed, an air filtration system, a kitchen counter, and a toilet for only $39,500, okay? They're only, only $39,000. There's another model. It's 2,400 square feet. 
It's, it cost $539,000. It's called the Eagle, and uh, it, it's got 42 bunk beds, 15 private rooms, a gun room, and a panic room, okay? This is crazy, right? The one with the most amenities is called the Aristocrat. It's only $8.35 million, but, okay, just so you know what kind of deal you're getting, it has a gym, a sauna, a swimming pool, a hot tub, a billiards room, a greenhouse, and a garage, okay? <laughs> Here's the deal. People are trying to find shelter with their own resources, with their own strength, with their own strategies, in their own power. And I just have to tell you today, there's not a shelter that's for sale that can keep us as safe as the presence of God. That's what Psalm 46 is reminding us, is that the presence of God is the safest place to be. It's a place for, for refuge, for safety. I love what A.C. Dixon said. He said, in Jesus Christ on the cross, there is refuge. There is safety. There is shelter and all the power of sin upon our track cannot reach us when we've taken shelter under the cross that atones for our sins. This is such good news. We have refuge and safety under his covering. In fact, if you don't know Jesus yet, you can put your faith in him right now and find a place of refuge of peace, of hope, of love, of grace. I mean, that, what an offer. Psalm 46, 1, God is our refuge and strength. He's our strength. Facing the storms of life often leaves you weak and depleted. We're long enough into this crisis that many are finding ourselves there. We're just tired we're worn down. We don't know if we can make it another day, let alone another week, let alone another month. When, when, when you find yourself like giving, ready to give up, when you find yourself just saying, I think I'll just stay in bed today. I don't, I don't think I want to face this today. We can get up not in our own strength, but in the strength that we get from God. When we are weak, we can run to him and we find strength. Men especially, listen to me, don't buy into the lie that you always have to be strong. Don't buy into the lie that you always have to have the answers. Don't buy into the lie that you can fix everything. I know a lot of us men, we're, we, we like to fix things and we, we try to pretend that we can fix every problem that comes our way. Sometimes the strongest thing to do is to confess our weakness. Confessing your problem is not a sign of weakness. It, here's how I want you to see it. It opens the door for the strength of God to show up. Here's the principle. Every miracle begins with a problem. Every miracle begins with a problem. Read, read through the New Testament. Read the, the miracles as people follow Jesus around. And, and the lame walk right? The deaf hear, the blind see, the, the 5,000 come to the hillside to hear Jesus, and then they realize they don't have enough to eat. Every miracle began because there was a problem. Here's what that means for us. Your heartache invites the comfort of God. Your worry makes way for the peace of God. Your sickness welcomes his healing. Your confusion and frustration invite his guidance. Our, our sins and our failures and our shortcomings, they, they literally cause God to extend his forgiveness and his mercy and his grace. What if we decided, church, that every problem was simply an opportunity for the strength of God to show up in our lives, in our family, in, in our church, across our city? I believe that Every problem is an opportunity for the strength of God. Psalm 46 is reminding us today that we find strength in our refuge in God. God here's what it says. God's our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. This was actually the, the, the focus of the Devo on Wednesday as my dad joined me, talked about how God is with us. He's one of the names uh, that, that he's given in Matthew as he's about to be born, baby Jesus, is he will be called Emmanuel, God with us. Friends, he never leaves us. How amazing is that? 
God is with us. He's an ever-present help. The, the word here uh, that, that's used, ever-present, it has even a greater meaning in the Hebrew language. It means an accessible help, or think of it this way, one that is easy to be found. I haven't told a story about our dog, Cooper, in quite a while, so I figure some of you are probably wondering why we still love him. He's, he's wonderful. Um, I thought I'd tell you a story. One of the things we like to do with our dog is we play hide and seek. We, we like to think he's a really smart dog, and so we play hide and seek with him. So uh, usually Lisa or I, one of us will go hide, and then the, gr- and the girls will keep him in a room, and they'll say, go find Lisa, or go find, go find Jason. And he'll come sniffing around the house. And, and honestly, honestly, we don't usually hide very well, okay? We, we kind of make it a little bit easy for him to hide, a, you know, to find us. We'll be, you know, kind of just behind a door or around a corner. But it's so fun when he finds us. Am I right, girls? I mean, when he finds us, I mean, I'm just telling you, like, he goes crazy. I mean, he's jumping and running laps around the house, and all three of the girls are screaming and laughing, and they're saying, you found him. You found dad, Cooper. Good job, Cooper. And you would think our house, we won the lottery. I mean, all of us. I mean, we're dancing and laughing. I mean, it's, it's just so much fun. And I thought about that. So I thought about the joy that our family has in that moment when our dog finds one of us. And I thought, you know, that's the kind of joy that God has when we come looking for him. I mean, I mean, the idea, some people have an idea of God <laughs> like he's hiding from us, right? Like, like, like in, he doesn't want to be found. The, the idea here in the psalm, it says he's an ever-present help. It's like he's, he's hiding in the easiest places to be found. He, he's not hard to find. And not only is he easy to be found, he wants to be found. And there's joy in his heart when we find him. He's He's ready for us. God is our refuge and our strength. He's accessible in times of trouble. And when you face trouble, we can hold on to the promise that God is with us. He will always be with us and he will help you. And because of that, here's the end of the verse, it says, therefore, we will not fear. We will not fear. When the girls were younger, some parents, you'll kind of, probably have your own stories of this. When the girls were younger, sometimes there would be a storm. The lightning would flash and the thunder would boom and the rain would pelt the windows. And and, and sometime in the night, one of the girls might find their way to our room and just crawl into the bed. And it was amazing how all that they really needed was for mom or dad to put our arms around them and to tell them that it was going to be okay and off to sleep they would go. Not a worry in the world. I thought of that because here's the reality. Did mom or dad stop the storm? No, the storm kept going. They found refuge in the presence of a loving mother, of a loving father. Just being with us made them feel safe. And that's exactly how it is with Jesus. When we're uncomfortable, when we're in a dangerous or a frightening situation, when we're worried, stressed, tired, weary, burdened, the presence of Jesus comforts like nothing else. I mean, it's just like he just puts his arms around us and says, everything is going to be okay. You may not be removed from the situation, but his presence will chase away the fear. If we'll listen for his voice, his gentle words will give us peace. They'll bring protection. He will strengthen us. And now the burden of that situation is no longer our responsibility as we lean into the loving arms of our Father. He is an ever-present help in trouble. But the good news is this, The good news is he may not always stop the storm, but I want to remind you today that he's big enough to stop the storm. At any moment, God can snap his fingers, speak a word, blink his eye, like whatever he wants to do in that moment, and he can stop the storm. I love the scene in the movie The Lion King 
where little baby Simba, he's, he's just a cub lion, and, and he's running around, and he, he, he's, he's in the territory where the hyenas uh, live, and the hyenas see that the little baby Simba's all alone, and they, they start coming towards him, and, and I just love, this is my favorite scene in the movie, is all of a sudden, he just, he turns towards those big, bad hyenas, and, and he, he opens his mouth to roar, and you hear this gigantic, I mean, real, like, like big daddy lion roar, and you're kind of thinking, how did that come out of that little baby lion? And the, the hyenas just go running. And as the camera pans back, you see that Simba's dad is behind him. And you didn't hear the roar of baby Simba, you heard the roar of the lion. I love this picture because it's a reminder that our God is that big bad daddy lion who stands behind us. And sometimes as we're facing our fears, we're just trying to muster up enough confidence, enough, enough faith to believe, I think I'm gonna make it. I think I'm gonna get through it. I think we're gonna be able to pay the bills. I think we're gonna, I think, and we just kind of let out this little baby. But behind you, here's the good news. It's not our war that matters, right? Behind you is a heavenly father who loves you, who cares about you, who is his strong and mighty, who is a refuge in our times of trouble, who never leaves us, who never lets us down, and he's the one standing behind us. He has the power to stop the storm. Because of our heavenly father, we don't have to be afraid. This promise is found all over the scriptures. Uh, I actually had a hard time narrowing down where we were gonna land uh, to talk about this promise. But I wanna end with one more, one more scripture. Psalm 91 verses one and two says this. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. I love the picture of this verse. When we dwell in the shelter of the Most High, when we set up camp there, when we say this is where we're going to reside, we are going to live in the covering, in the shelter, in the refuge of our mighty God. We're gonna live here. Here's the idea. When we live in the shadow of our God, in the refuge, in the shelter of our God, then we can rest even though we're in the middle of unrest. In fact, I think this is the one, one of the greatest testimonies of a follower of Christ, is that the world around us can be crumbling, but we have the peace of God the surety of God, the confidence of God. We don't have to run around like chickens with our heads cut off, wondering if this conspiracy is true or that conspiracy is true, or are they after our bank account? Are they gonna put a microchip in us? Are they trying to get someone else elected? Like what in the world are we even talking about? When we have the promise of God that he is our ever-present help, that he is our shelter, that we can reside in that shelter and we can rest. I think it's a beautiful picture that we can rest in the middle of unrest. I've come today to remind you to hold tight to the promise of God that the help of God is stronger than any crisis we have ever faced, we are facing, or we will ever face in our future. Friends, I just want to pray for you today because some of us need to be reminded that the shelter, that we can live in the shelter of the Almighty and we can rest. We pray for you. Jesus, I pray right now for friends here and friends that are tuning in online and across all the different platforms. Lord, I just I pray right now, Lord, that we would put our hope completely in you. Lord, I pray that today, friends that are feeling worried, anxious, fearful, discouraged, that today, Lord, we would find ourselves under the shadow 
of the Almighty. Lord, we just declare today that you are our refuge, that you are our strength, that you, God, have kept us, you are keeping us, and you will continue to keep us. Lord, these next couple of weeks, there's just, there's so much uncertainty around um, businesses opening, around school opening. There's so much, there's so much anxiety in our world today. I just speak the peace of God right now over every home, every family, every student, every business, every, every school, every, God, I just pray, I pray the peace of God right now because Lord, we put our hope and our trust in you and it's in your name we pray today, amen.
Harvest, thank you for tuning in today for Harvest Online. We can't wait to be back together in just a couple of weeks. Today, I'm praying for you, especially if you need to find the refuge and strength that we can find in our God. As you're going about your week this week, may the Lord bless you, keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. Harvest, go be the church.